Hi guys, it's your girl Sonica, and yes, I am back with another video. Can you believe it? So today's video, I will be doing the Filipino tag challenge. I originally made this video before in like <laughs> a long time ago, but um, you know when I was recording it, you know my camera shot off, and you know it didn't record it. <laughs> so I'm redoing it, and um, I'm just trying to like de-stress before final. So. Yeah, let's get into this video. So this video is basically asking a Filipino a few questions about themselves and their culture and uh, yeah, let's get down to business. Okay, first question. Do you live in the Philippines? If not, then when was the last time you were in the Philippines? I do not live in the Philippines. I live in Chicago, Illinois. And why does my neighbor keep mowing his lawn? Like, honestly. <laughs> uh, last time I went to the Philippines was in 2015 and it was summer so when i went there it was like 100 degrees like super super freaking humid as heck but um uh, yeah i survived it i did my best to survive it because every second you were there you were sweating like the moment you get out of the shower boom you're sweating again i was just like i was just sweating constantly but you know i don't like that i don't like the heat <laughs> so I don't know how I'm gonna survive the summer because I feel like this is gonna be a really really hot summer Plus I'm gonna go to Florida and um, They reach three digits and I don't know if I'm prepared for that. So Next question Which part of the Philippines are you from? So I like I said, I am not from the Philippines But my mom is from Lucena and my dad is from Miko Three Name one Filipino dish you enjoy the most and why Ooh, that's really hard. Okay, so I have two. My first is always gonna be bistec. That's been my love growing up. I have. There's no explanation. Once you try it, you'll know why. That is my favorite. I mean, all Filipinos know. You know. You know why. It's like, oof, I can't get enough. <laughs> um. Okay. So the second one would be uh, bangus sisig. So this is the. I think it was last December when I went to Cucina de Manila for my cousin's birthday dinner and oh they had bango sisig and I love anything bango is related and oh that I don't really like sisig but like when it was combined with the bango it's like I could not resist the smell was so enticing every bite you took it had so much flavor and the it was very very good you if you're in Illinois check out cocina de manila they have a lot of vents there so make sure like you know make a reservation make sure it's open because sometimes they close the restaurant for the reservations uh, okay next question um do you know how to speak tagalog or any other philippine dialect if so say a phrase or two so my favorite is gutom <laughs> nako okay uh Another one, name one Filipino household item that best resembles our culture and why. Um, okay. <laughs> so for sure, that's going to be the tabo. Like, that was like the strangest thing that I've ever seen. Like, growing up, I didn't know why we had it, but we had it. So basically, it's like a, I would say like a little basin or bucket that you use to gather up the water so you could just pour it on yourself to wash yourself. Like, I didn't understand that growing up, but when I went to the Philippines, I understood why. Because, you know, their water there, um, it's really low pressurized, like, not much comes out. So you have to gather all, all your water in, like, the bucket and then just pour it on yourself. And here, like, I was like, huh? But, like, our water system, our, like, you know, a lot of water comes out, so there's no problem. But we, like, you know, sometimes if we didn't have a tabo, we would use, like... <laughs> we would use uh, like those uh, those um, those cups that you get from like the slushies I was just like yeah that, that was our life growing up but I don't really use it right um, anymore because like you know like I said our system our water systems like really on point with that and like a lot of water comes out so there's really no need for that but yeah that's <laughs> that's one household item that uh, resembles our culture and another one I would assume I don't know if it's just my family but like you know everything is gonna be covered in plastic I don't know why this is 
but like it just it just is like in our also uh, like if you get like new electronic devices or you get like new appliances you know uh i think our dryer our washing machine still has like the freaking plastic that on the on t the lid <laughs> and then like so we really like uh when you get like a remote or a new tv like the remote is covered in plastic you know and so yeah we would still have it on and if it like ripped or anything my mom would she would use like the plastic they use for food and just wrap it around the plastic and i'm just like it makes sense because like like a lot of foods we eat is really oily or we don't want to get the remote dairy but that really makes sense but that's another thing in our culture you know everything is covered in plastic i've been in some ho filipino homes where like the furniture was covered in plastic and that was very uncomfortable to say that. but yeah plastic is our holy grail you, uh, you would say so um what is the stereotype about filipinos okay the one I can think of right off the bat is that we're always late. And that is a fact. That is straight facts because, you know, events start at 7, we won't be there till like 9. And, like, but if it's really important, um, you know, we will arrive early. But, like, for us, I think it's just my dad. <laughs> my dad's side. Um, I get it from him, like, he would not even make it one hour later or two. Sometimes he would just go there three hours later and I'm just like, huh? But my mom always taught me like, if it's really important, always show up on time or go early because you know, there might be something that might happen on a, on your way there. So it's better to arrive early than late. Cause in the business world, if you are early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, don't even bother showing up. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, another one. Do you own a karaoke machine? Sadly, no. A lot of Filipinos did grow up with karaoke machines, and that's why they have beautiful voices, singing voices. And I kind of, that's another stereotype, too, also that we all can sing. Oh, no. I cannot sing. I did not grow up with a beautiful voice, grow, like singing voice, also. I didn't grow up with a karaoke machine. I mean, it would have been nice to have a you know beautiful singing voice you know you know get those vocals you know the when america's got talent or something that i'm just saying but i wasn't fortunate to grow up with a karaoke machine i really wish i did because it would have been nice to have like a really nice voice singing really you know sometimes i envy those people but it's okay <laughs> it's okay it's okay uh have you tried balut oh heck no heck no you can pay me like so much money i will never ever in my life try eating that eating that ever no no please moving on <laughs> like my dad one time offered me to um eat this i was like what is it and, like this was when i was young and he said what it was and i was like and i saw it and i was like nope never in my life will i ever eat that heck no <laughs> what's your least favorite thing about being filipino my least favorite thing about Filipino, I don't know if it's just my family or it's in general Filipinos, but like for us growing up, like we were always taught like we weren't we were always taught to like never show our feelings or emotions. You know, they they would always give us like tough love or whatever. Like, um, growing up I was taught like if you show emotion, you know, like you're showing your weakness. You know, you always gotta stay strong, aka build tough love. And um, another thing is, oh, going back to that point. Um, um, so like when I got into this new relationship with, um, you know, my man, <laughs> uh, you know, it was really hard expressing my feelings, like just in general. Like if if I had a problem with something, I would. I wouldn't like tell him I would just hide it but like like he always knows what's going on he always knows that something's wrong and it's 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 really hard you know but I'm making progress because this is something new to me like even with my closest cousins like it's really hard for me to tell them things like it will take me a while to warm up to them even though we're really close it still takes me a while to like tell someone like how I'm feeling or whatever because I always like growing up I always hid my feelings so 
Yeah, that's one thing I don't like. When I am not gonna teach my future kids that, or I'm always gonna tell them that you can always talk to me about anything because I'm gonna be a supportive, you know, supportive mother in your life, you know. Oh, okay. Sorry, that was like really emotional. <laughs> okay, what's your favorite thing about Failure Point? Oh, girl. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, my favorite part of being Filipino, the food. Oh my gosh, the parties. Oh, like every like small event, there will always be a party. The food was always on point. I love our food. <sighs> and I love the people who make it. It's just like, oh, I can't get enough. I love being Filipino. I love you know my culture you know i'm not like disrespecting my culture i'm just telling my thoughts i'm not disrespecting anybody just a little disclaimer but i love being filipino i love my culture i love my family i love my friends you know and i really hope you like this video <laughs> sorry if i kept laughing but yeah uh if you like this video please like subscribe comment down below stay tuned because i will be making another video and I hope you enjoy. Follow my socials, if anything. <laughs> Bye. Have a great day.